Yo, 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 what's going on, Team Twitty? I hope you're all super well. We got Dad here for episode 14. How are you going, mate? Good. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Oh, he's had one warm-up episode. <laughs> this one, he thinks he's going to kill it. And we also got Claire making Hi. dinner. What are we having for dinner? Ah, surprise. <laughs> Sur okay, you're just going to have to wait for the vlog. So, today's video, it's only going to be one very, very general question. And... Seeing as we have Dad here, I want to try and get as many questions out of him and answers out of him from when I was younger and the sort of things I did. Because for me, I don't remember anything I was doing when yeah, I was... you probably don't. <laughs> no. I don't remember it all, yeah. every minute. Yeah, so we're, we're going to venture into that. And so if you have any more questions for Dad, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Dad's very keen to answer these, aren't you? Keen. I'm so keen. I'm <laughs> so excited. Wait. Okay, what so... comments? <laughs> Or you can send them to Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. What's Instagram? Oh, dear. <laughs> Come on. All right. First question. Oh, well, the only question. How dedicated was Sheldon when he was 14 and what was his schedule? Well, that's that was a very interesting year. I think you turned 14 during that year, towards the end of that year. But that was a year that was very challenging because you weren't playing reps, you were playing club football. I guess in some countries they'd call it park football. Yeah, so like in Australia how it goes, I've explained this before, you have the A-League, the Youth League, below that is like reps. Yeah, and then various divisions. Of yeah, reps. various divisions and then below that is club. So I was pretty low. You were, you were yeah. playing club football. I thought you might give it away. It was a really? test. It was, well, it was a test of character and commitment because we kept going to rep trials and you kept not being mm. picked, mostly because you were too small. Multiple rep trials. It wasn't just Lots we go... Rep trials. Oh, so anyway, yeah. no, let's not, we can do that another time. Yeah. Let's not talk about rep trials. Let's talk about that year. So I knew that training at club level wasn't going to be good enough. You weren't going to get back into the rep scene if you just went to club training. So I looked around, I asked for advice on the various different academies and there weren't there's lots of academies in Sydney now but there weren't many then and I think just before that they'd opened up an AC Milan Academy in one of the northern suburbs of Sydney so we went to that it was quite expensive and so but at the same time you were going to this school where if you weren't paying playing rep football you had to play for the school. It was absolutely compulsory yeah. to play football for the school. So I couldn't go out and search for the best team for the club. I had to play in this school team, and the it, the school team was okay, wasn't it? From what I remember. Oh, it was all oh, yeah, right. We did, well, we actually as, won. As a club team, it was okay. Yeah. But there was this mad thing where the AC Milan Academy, they were an academy where kids went to train, but they wanted to play games as well. So they joined up with this club called North Sydney, Sydney Bears. Bears. Yep. So they were like a cross between an academy and a club. It's almost like they took over the club. And the school that you played for, St Augustine's, they were in one association and North Sydney were in another association. Mm. So you were actually, it must have been before computers were invented, it was so long ago, <laughs> because you were registered probably illegally, in two associations. <laughs> so anyway, as far as games were concerned, all the games were played on Saturday morning. So it was oh, quite common yeah. for us to... Usually the North Sydney game was on first, and it was quite common for us to go to the North Sydney game. You'd play half a game for North Sydney. Yeah. They'd come, up at, come off at half time. We would run to the car, drive <laughs> like <remember>. maniacs <laughs> to the club game, get there later than we should have, and then you'd play a full game. So, and quite often you played two games, Yeah. and it was a bit difficult explaining to the North Sydney slash AC Milan coach that you had to go at half time, because he didn't understand <laughs> anything <laughs> about that. the school. He thought it was a lack of commitment. Anyway, that was Saturday morning with games. In terms of training, AC Milan trained Twice? three times oh, a three. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday yep. for two hours, seven till nine. But on at least two of the, well, maybe I think the school trained 
maybe on a Tuesday, but on at least one other day, yeah, we'd have to. You would train from I don't know five till six or four. No, no, to yeah, six. it would have been like four to five thirty because we four to five thirty. Yeah, jump in the car. Drive like maniacs to the AC Milan training. So on those days, have dinner in the car. And yeah, have dinner, have something to eat in the car. You would draw. We would. You would train for three and a half hours on those days, mm. and then that wasn't really enough. I mean, the AC <laughs> that wasn't enough. <laughs> the AC Milan training was excellent. Yeah, actually, yeah. that was outstanding. Uh, yeah, and the guy that ran it, what was his name? Oh, oh he's a, he used to play professionally for AC Milan. Well, he was a sensational. Starts with good, an A, midfielder. He was remember. a very good midfielder for AC Milan in the 80s. And oh, I know it as well. Oh, I know it. Anyway, go on. Anyway, look up there. He'll write it on the screen. Yeah, no, I won't because this is, I don't edit it. But yeah, anyway. Whatever. Their training was very good. Um, so you got a lot of good skills training there. But as well as that, we used to go down to the Oval. Probably at that stage, maybe twice a week. Together, and just me and you. Just me and yep. you, and we would train for a couple of hours, and we would have this whole series of oh. skills. So you would do passing between cones, yeah. um, you would do free kicks, uh, and all the time that we're doing these things, he'd be saying to me, can we do shooting there? Can we do shooting there? All he ever wanted <laughs> to do was shooting. <laughs> so we'd set up these goals, and do shooting and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh, and well, long we'd been doing that for many years, but the thing I remember most about the early years was that we'd do one on ones. We'd set up a little note. Oh, we'd set up the this was net, epic. And we'd do these one on ones, and I was completely hopeless. But in the beginning, when he was about I still... six, <laughs> I would easily beat him every time, so I'd have lost. to go easy on I would, him. If I lost, I would cry, wouldn't I? Oh, yeah. I'd get so angry. So we'd give, we'd give a handicap. I'd get... No, you'd get about... We'd six go first so. to nine, and you'd get a five or six. Yeah. Start. And then as he got older, I'm the one that got the start. And then eventually I couldn't play him anymore. Yeah. It was just pointless. Oh, I'd love to verse you now, mate. Yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, so he was very committed. Lots wow. of hours, many hours. How many hours a week would that have been? Well, six. I suppose six with six, AC Milan, couple with the other guys, maybe three, nine, probably two or three with me. Probably about twelve hours a week. Yeah, and see that that was a lot, and a lot of these guys that are watching want to train like thirty hours, forty hours a week. Um, yeah, no, I think that was probably enough. Yeah, um, and there were other years when I thought you probably could have done more. Oh, I did too. But um, I mean, that was pretty intense with the AC Milan. Yeah. Is that enough? Well, I want to touch on one more thing. I remember a question off the top of my head that was from that video, and they wanted to know a bit more about, at that age, I think it was something to do with futsal. Do you think futsal, uh, for those of you guys who don't know what futsal is, it's indoor Everybody soccer. Everybody knows indoor what football. futsal yeah. is. I was... Like, how long did I play that for? What was my experience with it? And do you think it helped me playing outdoor soccer or, or football, real football? Well, let me tell you a story that you won't remember. Oh, dear. <laughs> when, you, when you were about seven, six or seven, something like that, I heard about... I knew that you weren't getting enough football. Um, you know, the season was pretty short. We'd have this long summer, no football. And I'd heard about this thing called futsal indoor soccer. So I went a few suburbs away where I heard they did it. They didn't do it very much in those days. Yeah. And the Italians had organised this. It's always the Italians, yeah. right, AC Milan. The Italians had organised this indoor soccer thing. So I went and put your name down, paid my $40, put your name down, and... Yeah waited for them to call me and they never called me and they never called me and I called them a few times and eventually they said no it doesn't work like that you've got to bring a team you can't just have one oh. this is a competition where you have to enter a team and they didn't tell me that in the first place yeah, yeah. so you missed out I was filthy about it <laughs> so a whole season went by where you couldn't play futsal yeah. so you started playing when you're about 10 yeah 10 for the under 12s uh, no, there was a little bit before that. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it went under. A little yeah, yeah. bit, but um, 
But really, starting playing futsal, like, when I got into the rap scene... Yeah, you played futsal from when you were 10 to when you were about 16. I just thought it was brilliant. I thought it was a bit older than 16, maybe oh, 17. Maybe 17, but it was brilliant. I think it was one of the most important things in your development. I mean, the Why? whole thing... Well, because you get so many touches on the ball. Like, if you watch, if you watch videos of you playing football... From when you were ten, yeah. Sometimes you go ten minutes without getting a touch. Even now, especially at that age, you can yeah, go yeah. ten minutes True. without getting a touch. There, you're getting a touch. There's five guys getting a touch every ten, fifteen seconds. Yeah. So lots of touches. It's small sided. It's incredibly fast. Yeah. And it's about well, what did we say the other day? What's the most important skill set? First touch yeah. and passing. Futsal's all about first touch and passing. Yeah. Quick movement, agility. I think it's brilliant. I so, think anyone who aspires to be a rep footballer should get into it. Yeah, I mean, you just yeah. have to look at Tom Rogic. And then I, I saw a video of Coutinho the other day. It's, yeah, Coutinho from Liverpool, Brazilian guy. Like, all the Brazilians play it. And yeah, and your coach was Brazilian. Uh, yeah. Your coach, your initial coach, pure at football, futsal. Yeah. Um, Fernando? Although it's different techniques, I remember so many times I would go to futsal training and I'd control it with the inside of my foot, but you have to control it with the sole. And then you go play football and you'd start controlling it with the sole. You have to rewire your brain. But yeah, but the it's brain such can a, deal Yeah, with exactly. The and brain can deal a lot of coaches said to me, I don't know if you remember, but they said, ah, oh, you don't like, I don't like futsal because you have to control it differently. But you just deal with it and you still get the same concept of a game. No, because... You look at how much futsal... I mean, the yeah. two great football nations of the world are... Brazil. And... Australia. Spain, you idiot. <laughs> and look yeah. how much futsal they oh, play. Yeah. I mean, you go to Barcelona and they have all these futsal teams in Barcelona. Yeah, and it might not even be... So futsal, you should yeah. go back to Spain and play futsal. Forget about outdoor, just go back to futsal. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Thanks, mate. You made my decisions for me. <laughs> so I think that gives you guys a pretty good insight into my like younger youth life of football. Maybe another video we could even go younger. Like, yeah, we can do that. Like five yeah. to ten. Let me know if you guys are interested in that in the comments. But that's going to do it. Thanks, mate. Respect. I appreciate that. Thank that's you. That's really awkward handshake, but okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna go. <laughs> if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button to join the hashtag Ask Tweety Show team journey, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Goodbye. Listen.